Hello and thanks for watching Palo Alto video training series. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, security profiles and what they are and how we can create security profiles or customize them based on our requirements and use them in policies. Uh, there are different types of security profiles in Palo Alto firewalls, uh, like antivirus profile, anti-spyware profile, uh, vulnerability profile, which is uh, basically your IPS, URL filtering, file blocking, data filtering, and dust protection. We're going to uh, quickly run through these different profiles and understand their operation and understand how they're going to work for us. So let's get started. First thing first, we just log into our firewall again. So, um, again, on the top bar, we just click on objects. And you can see there are different types of security profiles on the left. <coughs> so we have antivirus, anti-spyware, vulnerability, URL filtering, and so on. So let's uh, start with antivirus profile. So as you can see, uh, most of these profiles, they already have a default uh, type of profile created that we could use or we could create a new one uh, with the add button right at the bottom. So it's, it's totally up to you how you want to use it. Um, we could create a new one or we could use the default one. So if we just uh, click on default profile, um, you can see there are a number of actions like alert, reset, and things like that. It's been defined on the default profile uh, uh, by default, and uh, you could basically add virus exceptions and things like that in there as well. So by default, the, the default profiles are read-only, so you cannot change the default profiles. If you want to change the stuff in there, you have to create your own profile. So we just go ahead and create an our, our own profile. We call it uh, my virus profile and script and uh, as you can see there are a number of decoders so the number of uh, protocols or services that will be checked uh, on the profile by default so we could uh, define what action uh, firewall to take uh, so there are a number of different actions that you could choose you could allow it you could just send an alert you could drop it you could Reset the client or server reset post. So you, you see by default it is reset post, reset post. So for IMAP, we just choose the same thing and same thing for everything. <coughs> so we just select that reset post for uh, all of them. So if you want to, to send uh, the samples to uh, wildfire and then when you receive the wildfire response, what to do, uh, you could specify those ones as well. As I said, wildfire is the cloud uh, type of analytics for Palo Alto that they uh, gather the files and, and samples and things like that in there and analyze it and then uh, um, based on that obviously we'll update the signatures or update the uh, uh, patches and things like that. So we just, uh, <clears throat> again as I said, if you want to uh, create an exception you could do that sometimes. Uh, you might just uh, wonder when you need to create a virus exception. If it's a virus, a virus doesn't, uh, you don't really need to create a, an exception. But by default, Palo Alto will uh, block a lot of things that it feels like it, they are virus, they might not be virus, and it will give them a treat ID. So you could just use that treat ID. If it is just a false positive and it's not a real virus, you could just use that treat ID to, to create an exception rule. And, uh, make sure your firewall is not doing anything wrong. You could also create application exceptions. You could say for some specific applications, uh, <clears throat> we don't really uh, want to do uh, virus scanning, for example, for Gmail or whatever. Uh, that's not our requirement now, so we just leave it as it is. So created our profile, our, our, our first virus profile. 
You could do the same thing with anti-spyware profile. Again, we have our default uh, profiles which are read only, so you can change stuff in there. Um, but we could go and create a new profile as well. So with anti-spyware, you can see that the different severities they have different type of action and uh, uh, basically with the um, uh, anti-spyware there are two different type of uh, uh, default profile predefined profile uh, one is a strict which is sending reset for everything one is default which is uh, just creating and locking it creating an alert and logging it. So again, um, we're going to use this uh, uh, entire spiral profile. Uh, so we're not going to create a new one. Again, you can create uh, exceptions if you want to, or you could uh, create exceptions based on DNS if you want to. So we just leave it as it is. We're going to use the strict uh, uh, profile for entire spiral here as well. Next one is the vulnerability protection. That's uh, uh, our basically IPS on Palo Alto Firewall. So you can see again we have default and strict. Uh, with the strict, you could say uh, um, there are specific rules for the client. There are specific rules for the server side. So if it detects that the there is a vulnerability on the client or there's a vulnerability on the server side, it will act differently. So if you click on this, you could see if uh, it's a severity, high severity, critical severity, uh, client side problem, it will send a reset to both. Uh, same thing for, for server. So if this uh, depends on, on, on the type of severity it is, uh, it, will, it will act differently your firewall. And again, you could create exceptions if you want to as well. So you could you could also add your own uh, uh, IPS profile in there as well. You have to add all these things manually. Usually it's uh, not an easy task to create a uh, IPS profile yourself. You could use a uh, predefined one or you could clone it if you want to. You could just create a clone and then <coughs> uh, once you created the clone you could start changing uh, things in there. So you could just call it uh, my strict IPS and uh, uh, if you want to change the stuff in there uh, or uh, uh, add new stuff in there, you could, you could do all those kind of things. So, next one is the URL filtering. URL filtering is uh, obviously <coughs> an important one. By default, you might want to uh, block a lot of you know categories and things like that um, to make sure that. Uh, Users they only access internet uh, for uh, business purposes and, and there is no risk uh, as well. So there is again a default URL uh, filtering profile in there that you could just review or you could create a new one. I'm going to create a new one myself. I just call it uh, my URL profile. And if you have a blacklist or, or whitelist, you could uh, add it in there. Um, you could specify the action. Uh, and uh, you could specify the action for your blacklist. Sorry. Um, you could just uh, say send an alert, continue, block it, or whatever. Uh, we don't really have any blacklist at the moment. Uh, we just uh, choose categories like adult to be blocked, uh, have used prop to be blocked. Um, dating, we're going to um, kind of send an alert, still let people, um, the 
connect if they want to. <coughs> Gambling, we want to lock it, and so on. So it's so a couple of categories. So you could you, you get the idea. Basically, you could define or uh, adjust the requirement for different categories. Uh, Palo Alto has the uh, online analytics again that they can uh, uh, update these these lists lists all the time and, and uh, keep keep the categories up to date. <coughs> so we just created the URL filtering as well. File blocking is the next one. Um, and uh, <coughs> you could uh, create a profile profile blocking my file blocking profile again and you could uh, specify what type of files you want to block or want to block executable for example any application file type is going to be exe or uh, um, badge and so on so I want to block this kind of files on my network click on OK so we um, sorry go to change the action to block right and okay so that will prevent people to download those kind of files or, or uh, transfer those those kind of files through uh, all the firewall next one that we want to talk about is the data filtering um, you could have a specific data patterns uh, to be blocked on Palo Alto Firewall. This is specifically useful um, if you know what the pattern is. For example, you want to uh, create a uh, pattern for your credit card numbers, and you want to make sure that the credit card numbers are not being transferred uh, over the internet or, or on through Palo Alto Firewalls. Um, so you could just uh, create the pattern of uh, credit card numbers, these are regex numbers and stuff you could in, add, add in there. It's very specific, you need to know how, how the regex stuff works. You could uh, create a regex for, for your credit card numbers and then use that uh, uh, data filtering profile to block people if they want to transfer credit card numbers uh, over the internet link. So that's very, very useful. Um, and dust protection. So that's that's again an important one. You want to specify a dust protection profile to make sure that uh, people won't <coughs> um, um, attack your servers, or or uh, uh, there won't be any any uh, uh, scene attack or or uh, dust attack on on your specific objects and policies on the firewall. So we just uh, create my DOS profile and uh, you could specify scene attack and what are things needs to happen. Um, basically the thresholds and stuff you could specify for UDP again and uh, for ICP as well for ping and stuff like that. So all of those things you could specify and create your um, DOS, DOS profile. So that's uh, uh, your DOS profile. So once you've created all of the profiles that, that you want, uh, you could use these, these profiles on uh, the policies that you are creating individually, or you could create a security profile group, which is a combination of different profiles that you want uh, and and use that on your policies. For example, I want to use a strict antivirus and anti-spyware profile with the medium type of uh, vulnerability protection and no URL filtering and group them as one security profile and uh, no antivirus, no anti-spyware uh, and powerful IPS and uh, high URL filtering, for example, as a second uh, security profile. So it's totally up to you. I want to create security profiles. So it's going to create one security profile. We call it my security profile again. It's a virus, which is 
choose the entire profile that we created in TypeSpyware. Just use the strict one. We just use the IPS profile that we created. The URL filtering again. The URL filtering that we created. Uh, file filtering. Just use the file blocking profile that we created and the data one. So we haven't created anything for data for all five. So just leave them as none. And okay, so you can see that we have a profile. We could play with all these different profiles and create a group of profiles uh, when you want to, and then you could use that uh, on your policies. So I'm just gonna commit all the changes that you've done. Again, you could just preview changes if you want or, or validate them. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on commit. Uh, we just give it uh, a couple of seconds to commit the changes and apply the configuration. And uh, once it's done, I'm just going to show you quickly. Again, I'm going to talk about this in the next video, but quickly, um, when we actually create the policy, um, if you go to <laughs> Actions tab, you have a uh, uh, profile setting. So you could choose a group or you could uh, choose individual profiles uh, based on your part. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Um, I'll be with you soon again on the next video.